good morning guys so today i am very excited about today's vlog because i am doing a collaboration with dr webb um if you don't know who he is uh he's an orthopedic surgeon who has his own youtube channel as well um so pretty much i think he's getting ready to finish his residency and you should go check out his channel if you, uh, if you haven't, especially if you're interested in like the medical field because he gives a lot of perspective and advice about different careers in the medical field, about his journey to medicine, about his time as an orthopedic um, resident. So yeah, pretty much I'm going to show the day in my life as a medical student and then he's going to show the day in his life as an orthopedic surgery resident. So it should be a pretty cool day. I'm interested to see what surgeons do myself. So. Let's get to it. First up, I have a class at 8.30. I have the look of tiredness all over my face. I went to um, sleep last night like around 2 a.m. We have exams next week, so it's gonna be a long week of studying for me. But as I head to my first pathology lecture, I'm gonna toss it over to Dr. Webb and see what he's getting into this morning. What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. It's about 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, Today you will be following me around as a orthopedic surgery uh, resident. I'm a fourth year orthopedic surgery resident out in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you, Precious, for the uh, collaboration. So today you'll be following me around, and I'll show you what it's like to be a resident, uh, kind of what we do on a day in and day out basis. Uh, today I do have some patients I need to go see in the hospital as well as I have a uh, surgery scheduled for today and we have lectures. Um, in residency, we still have lectures as residents. So uh, the chief residents or the upper level residents, we teach our junior residents and also re receive lectures by our staff. So today is a pretty busy day. I'm going to try to get a workout in also and then we still have to study as residents. So later on tonight I have to come back home and uh, study but uh, follow me along uh, throughout the day today um, and we will show you what it's like to be a resident here we go this is our work room here in the ER a lot of uh, this room is kind of dirty but a lot of equipment books that we use to study when there's no patience is a model of a pelvis here this is a instrument that we use to cut wires when we're putting wires and bone bones here in the er to kind of stabilize the fracture some clips if we need it in the er this is a wound back a suction device that goes on the patient's wound it keeps it keeps everything nice and dry and over here just some cast material. We need to do a cast. And always some books. There's really shouldn't be any downtime. Anytime that you have to uh, really study, you always study. And you can see one of the residents was studying this book here. So I am done with both of my lectures. Um, I have a little lunch break, so I'm just about to warm up my food. So I'm in the library right now, so I'm just going to be um, whispering a little bit. But So I had two lectures this morning, and now I have my lunch break, which is an hour. So typically we have class um, Monday through Friday, and then we have two lectures in the morning. The first is at 8.30, the second is at 10.30, and they're both two hours. And then we have an hour lunch break from 12.30 to 1.30. And then in the afternoon, we'll either have like a lab, path lab, or we'll have like another lecture or we have um hospital day which i have today i'm gonna head to the hospital today after lunch and the schedule can vary from week to week but usually it's like three pathology lectures a week two farm lectures a week um we have pathophys twice a week and then micro maybe once or twice a week and all of our lectures are recorded um unless the professor doesn't want to be recorded but most times it's recorded so you know attendance isn't mandatory if you feel like you can all you can learn better on your own or if you just want to watch the 
lecture later you don't have to attend class but for me it just depends on the lecture like um some i feel like i don't need to come to and some i'm like if i'm in class i'll understand it better so then i will go to lecture so we had farm this morning and we had pad and i'm gonna head to the hospital soon i think today we're gonna be assigned um cardiology patients so i'm just like reviewing the um physical exam for cardiology and their video systems which is pretty much like the um taking the history and then this is like a little handbook that they gave us to help with um history and physical exam so this is um the history checklist i would ask most of these but a real focus on the cardiology questions since that's the patient i'm going to be seeing today <laughs> And of course, I can't take the camera in there, so I'm gonna toss it over to Dr. Webb and see what he's up to. All right, so we'll start with the uh, first case. I'm Antonio Webb, one of the fourth years. Uh, SV, she's a 47 year old female. She um, presented with three months of neck pain associated with weakness of her bilateral upper extremities as well as lower extremities times uh, four years duration. She required a cane uh, for ambulation. Um, <clears throat> she had difficulty with her uh, gait and maintaining a straight posture. Her review system was negative. She has a history of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, she was diagnosed at age five and osteoporosis. She's on social security. She lives at home with her family. And these are her medications here. DEXA scan was um, uh, negative 2.7 and CT angio was negative. Here are her uh, x-rays. Her um, This is a lateral of the uh, cervical spine as well as a um, AP and flexion extension. Um, in terms of the uh, measurements for for a patient with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, you want to calculate their ADI, which is their lanto dens interval, um, as well as their uh, posterior uh, ADI, and then you want to uh, get flexion extension views to see if uh, the ADI or the PDI changes. Because they're cold, and there's a deletion of chromosome 13. Not always, but it's one of the causes. So remember, round cell deletions. Another example of a deletion is Prater. All right, so I just got to the operating room, and this is the uh, operating room. Uh, when the patient comes into the operating room, we put him to sleep on this table here. This is a uh, surgery table. Uh, we have lots of people in the room. There's a circulator nurse who uh, gathers all our supplies, medications, and she assists it with the uh, important parts of the surgery. There's a surgical tech who hands the surgeon the uh, instruments. There is a, uh, anesthesia, an anesthesia team, which consists of a tech and an anesthesiologist. And a x-ray tech, we use this machine right here. It's a uh, x-ray or CR machine in surgery. So while we're doing surgery, we can get live images of the patient. Um, they're still getting set up, but this is a table or a table back here that will place all of ster sterile instruments. And this is the kind of anesthesia um, equipment here, ventilator, which when the patient goes to sleep, this machine right here will breathe for them throughout the procedure. And they have different medications as well that uh, the anesthesia team uses in the surgery. Surgeries depend on how many cases we have to do that day. Today we have a patient who broke his wrist. We're gonna put a metal plate and some screws. But generally, before surgery, I try to get here, meet the patient, go over the risks, benefits, alternatives to uh, our procedure is called a consent form. Have them sign that or the parent sign it. And then we have to mark their extremity with a marker to let everyone know which side we're gonna work on. So if we're gonna work on the right wrist, uh, we need to make sure we operate on the right wrist because there's been a lot in the past, a lot of uh, wrong site surgeries, which means the patient signs up for surgery on their right wrist, but they undergo a left wrist surgery. That doesn't happen anymore that often, but that's where the marking their extremity uh, came from. But um, let's check in with uh, Precious to see what she has going on. <sighs> Currently sitting in this traffic, trying to leave the hospital. <sighs> so my day at the hospital was interesting. 
Um, I actually didn't even have a, a cardiology patient. I'm not even sure what he was in there for. He really didn't even know like what was wrong with him. But he pretty much just gave me like one symptom and I just had to work with that. He wasn't giving me a clear history of what happened or a clear timeline. So I just had to do my like um, interview skills the best I could, you know, ask his ask him as many like open-ended questions as I could um you know see why he was there see what his, some of his symptoms were things like that but it's also good practice to you know have patients that you know are like that not everyone is going to be talkative um he seemed really ag agitated and frustrated which I can imagine you know being at a hospital where so many different you know students are coming asking questions and residents and attendings there's so many different people and then the fact that he's been there for like two weeks and doesn't know what's wrong with him i'm sure he was frustrated based off that but yeah just again good learning experience and so as second year students we're primarily in the classroom but um this semester we go to the hospital one day a week and we uh practice we're given one patient and then we practice with the history and physical taking and then we present that to the attending but like i mentioned earlier we have exams next week we have five exams so yeah, the rest of the night, um, I'm just gonna be doing studying, probably about to just take a shower, eat, and then get to studying. So I'm gonna toss it over to Dr. Webb and see what he's up to. Right over the yes, SCR tendon. Oh, I didn't know you were on video. That's fine. Take pickups and some uh, small rates. Need a pickup, please? Mm -hmm. He's got one pickup up there. There you go. Did you want some small rakes or hooks? I got hooks. Or sends actually. Get some sends. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm just getting these little small bleeders. So they cross the scan. Yes. Tanami's place? Tanami's coming up, sir. Be careful. Uh, no going to Tanami's, but I got you some very fine uh, scissors there. Scissors. There you go. I got very long time. You can trip over that, please. Yeah. I don't know. leaving the uh, gym got a quick workout in 30 45 minutes I always try to limit my workouts to uh, at least 45 minutes because as a surgery resident we are busy time is of the essence I have to study when I go home and prepare for surgeries tomorrow so usually in and out you can see the Sun is starting to go down it's about 8 30 p.m. last night I worked 30 hours I didn't get any sleep we were so busy it was good though, a lot of traumas, a lot of good surgeries. Uh, so I'm heading home now to study. All right, I just got back from the gym. I'm about to get some studying in and that will kind of conclude my night. Thank you guys for watching this video and thank you guys for following me along throughout the day today. Thank you to Precious for the collaboration as well. If you guys have any more questions, you can always contact me on my website, AntonioWebMD.com or my email is OvercomingTheOddsBook at gmail.com. We'll see you next time. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my day as well. I'm just going to continue studying. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what it's like to be an orthopedic surgeon as well as a medical student. Um, I want to thank Dr. Webb for joining me in on this collaboration. If you guys have any questions, just comment below and make sure you check out his channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.